This is the first webinar of the Hong Kong Joint Branch. My name is Leslie, the Honorary Secretary of the Hong Kong Joint Branch. In this meeting room, we have Simon, Hello. our chairman, and speaker of tonight, Mr. Tao Shikwa. Hi. The Honorary Secretary of the Hong Kong. Yeah, and we have one more committee member joining in this meeting room, Wallace. Yes. Ron Pace. And uh, members, for joining the polls and Q&A, remember to click the link of the slide sent by the headquarters uh, email. And also remember to log in with the password HKJB21. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Koshik, as you know, uh, most of you know. So today's topic is impact of COVID on shipping. So as you know, that shipping is uh, greatly affected due to this pandemic uh, since last year. And I will explain how shipping has been affected. Also, I will touch on the supply chain side and the logistics side, because the shipping is part of supply chain and also the logistic is part of supply chain and also shipping is related to logistics as well. So I will mostly cover the shipping side, but I will touch upon supply chain and logistics side. So this is the uh, trend of the global trade uh, since 2006. As you can see, this is the baseline, okay? And and then you can see it was a steady, slightly up and down on the, on the world trade. Of course, 2008 recession, you know, that time it was affected and that's why it went so down, but probably not as down as minus 27% in last year, what we have seen. So it has greatly affected in the global trade and global trade and economy is based on shipping uh, going to various countries, various uh, regions. So in this presentation, I have four polls, okay? So you have to log into the Slido. When you registered, you already got the login details. You got the password, which is HKJB21. You have to log into the Slido to give your answer to the polls and also to type any questions you may have. I will try my best to answer your questions. Uh, if there is no time, then I will try to send the answers later on. So the polling will be there. Uh, so fast polling will be there and you will have chance to give your answer until next polling. And each poll has one answer, you can uh, click, but there is no right or wrong. The, this is opinion poll. We want to see your response and we want to see you know, what majority is saying. So that's the idea of polling. Okay, so be ready. Next slide will be the first polling. So this is the first polling and you can see there are four questions, okay? You can select anyone, whichever you think is correct in your opinion. And then you go to Slido and click the answers. And later on, we will disclose the results to all of you at the end of the presentation, okay? Okay, so when you are doing that, we can uh, go forward. You see the global trade by region in 2020, and you can see the percentage change over 2019, okay? So if you see that uh, compared to 2019, in 2020, the trade was dropped everywhere throughout the world, except you can see in Africa, South Africa, 
here only the export was uh, 4% up uh, on the quarter one, 2020, but quarter two, when uh, in April 2020, it went down to 30% negative. That means 40% down from the first quarter. Otherwise, everywhere it was down in the first quarter and further down in the second quarter. So if you see in the last year in April, the global trade was impacted the most compared to 2019. Uh, this is as for your reference, you can see the source. Uh, you can go and uh, find more details here. So basically the whole world was affected by COVID-19. And this is sector-wise change. And uh, if you can see uh, from starting from agricultural, foods, automotive to everything. If we see compared to 2019, quarter one, 2020, where there was even the positive results, uh, slight growth. But if you see April and quarter two of 2020, all went down, okay? In, uh, in all sector, so from chemicals to energy sector, to utility sector, uh, to our foods, everything went down. So the demand went down, the trade went down. Yes. And some are heavily affected, as you can see, minus 49%. So it was already minus eight, so further 41% down uh, in the automotive. Because if you see automotive is the, mostly the, uh, you know, luxury items and, you know, it is, uh, is, is not basic requirement. So if the demand was so less, even which are, which are basic requirement, the food, that's why here you can see that the change is not that great from plus two to minus two, only 4% difference because we need to have food to live our lives, okay? But where there are disposable money concern, when, where there are luxurious things concerned, the uh, trade went down further. Now coming back to shipping, as the shipping was a major part of this, uh, you can see. So shipping was affected by various things. Firstly, the you know, stressors. We all had stress because of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And there are various stressors uh, in our lives. So we had family anxieties because when the seafarers on board, they are anxieties about the family, the family had anxieties about them. And also uh, some people are working in other countries rather than home countries. They are away from families. So family anxieties uh, were one of the stressors. Then the health anxieties, because we were in a abnormal uh, situation or environment. So we all had some health issues. We gained weight. We had some mental health issues. And same on board, people couldn't go ashore. They even couldn't go to see the doctor. So the whole contract they spent on ships so definitely they had some health concerns, uh, especially the uh, mental health. Then they had, we had reduced interactions, whether it is on board uh, between the seafarers, whether ashore between our colleagues and between the family members, friends. So there were less in, uh, interactions and more isolation. So many places we had lockdowns, and uh, people, they work from home. They were isolated from colleagues, from friends, from families, or even they did not have anything due to travel. They had to go to quarantine. They were isolated in the hotel or maybe at home. And on top of that, there were bullying and harassment because these things also went up because of lockdown, because of the mental health conditions. So people got bullied more and more and people who were bullying them, also they, their tendency of bullying others also went up. And the financial concerns, 
there are many uh, organizations they had a uh, uh, staff reduction they had a problem with the renting the office and all so there they had a lot of issues the restaurants and other things were closed down uncertainties and that we all have what will happen our job what will happen with our life what will happen with our family so everywhere there are uncertainties then on board same thing for the seafarers they couldn't contact home they did not get the actual news they couldn't go shore some ships they don't have internet they couldn't connect family phone were not working the technician cannot come to repair there are lots and lots of issues and on top of that there are travel restrictions so seafarers they couldn't join to relieve uh, their colleagues because lot of countries they were not allowing the crew changes and due to that people who were on board they were on extended contract so they couldn't sign off and even they signed off sometimes they had a problem or if they have any conditions health conditions they couldn't travel so all this resulted into the uh, into their performance and well being so we have seen uh, the seafarers were morally upset we have seen the office staff they were morally upset Uh, we have seen there were no amusement for people the well being people couldn't go to gym they couldn't go to swimming pool they couldn't go to the restaurant so overall the well being of the people were affected as well and due to that we had also some temporary revision on the mlc so mlc as per mlc convention you may know the seafarers can stay maximum 11 months on board but in this pandemic situation it was relaxed and in certain cases the cpr stayed on board 15 16 months or maybe more so you can imagine the situation was quite stressful in shipping and at the same time the associated and other dependent industry which are dependent on shipping or the ship management ship owning business they also you know about to close down or close down because they did not have business because the pandemic was spreading from human to human so we restricted the human interactions we isolated them so at the same time we did not allow people to go on board you know so they they couldn't do their business so ultimately few companies small companies they couldn't survive they had to close down lot of people who were depending on the shipping industries lost their jobs as well and some companies they went into merger so they have done that so to keep their business alive and at the same time we had also issues with uh, ports and terminals because many countries they were not allowing even you have seen initially for the cruise terminals the cruise ships were not allowed same happened for the cargo ships even it was allowed people couldn't go there were no crew changes they could not receive any spares any uh, provisions so it was really really a very bad situation and there were concern about the safe ports and terminals uh we know the definition of safe ports and in the past we have seen many uh, law cases about the safe ports what's the definition of safe ports and charterers they are uh, responsible to provide the uh, ship operators safe ports so the vessel should go to the safe ports so now in this pandemic situation there was a question raised if a vessel going to a port or a region in a country where there is a breaking of uh, covid-19 pandemic will you call that port or that terminals uh, not that port or terminal is not safe so there was a debate you know and the few cases the decision was that 
if there was no physical damage to the vessel or if the vessel is not refused to enter into that port then that port is safe okay that was the decision made in few cases but it is uh, open to further debate and we will see in future what will be the safe port this definition and we had problem uh, of delivery of provisions spares and also sending the uh, service technicians on board and that that was also a very traumatic situation for all of us because we couldn't give proper support to the seafarers who are on board and at the same time seafarers who are sacrificing their life who are uh, at the forefront of shipping they couldn't do much they were deprived of getting things and uh, of not uh, having enough in their lives so it was really a very traumatic situation and same thing happened with the training seminars ship visit everything stopped but later on slowly the training started through the online training uh, same the seminars also started many companies they did the seminars uh, online remotely but visits to the ships are very restricted and many countries they have actually stopped the visits and this visits means physical visits by the office staff even they have stopped any people going on board whether it's uh, surveyors or auditors or some uh, delivery man no one can go on board okay so later on we have from the shore side we could connect the ship and we could visit the ship uh, uh, through cameras uh, because many ships are now have broadband but physical visits are completely stopped and until now even and due to this all this problem and then we had to extend the contract of the seafarers and it was going on until recently like uh, ansa australian maritime safety authority they allowed extension of contract until end of february but from march from this month again is back to the normal maximum 11 months and you can well understand that if it goes beyond that then the vessel will be detained and you know ship will be off air there will be a lot of issues but it's a big challenge still the crew change and as a result what is happening some seafarers also uh, got covid-19 and some ships also got covid-19 and all these things happened and ultimately the pni club uh, and the other insurers they had to help so eventually the pni insurance has gone up we have seen this year february is renewal in certain cases pni insurance has gone up 20 to 30% which is a big chunk of uh, operating cost so you can imagine you know if it's gone up one third that means how much it has uh, the shipping has been affected due to covid 19 and what various countries has done what all measures they have taken we can see through this graph you can see you know the survey is about more than 30 countries and we can see that crew landing only less than 10 out eight countries they allowed crew landing out of this 33 34 countries so you can imagine only one fourth of the those uh, countries which are surveyed only one fourth allowed and the other Five six, they did not allow at all, and other countries the data is not available or they were not disclosing. Okay, there are many gray areas. Uh, we couldn't find the right answer, yes or no. So, same for compulsory health check. Yes, most of the countries you can see almost eighteen nineteen countries they put in place that health check must be done. Means before. 
coming to that countries. Uh, as you know now, the COVID test before flying and after landing, before joining the ships, all these are in places. Okay, and then we have 14 days quarantine that also most of the countries they have. And total ban on cruise ships. This is very interesting. You can see out of 32, uh, almost 30 countries they have banned. And we have seen last year, many cruise ships, they couldn't call any port even to, uh, to get their passengers uh, off. So this was really very, very bad situation, okay? But on the other way, if you see the cargo ships, they are completely, comparatively in a better situation. Uh, most of the countries, they are allowing cargo ships provided you don't have any onboard uh, cases or you are maintaining uh, uh, the ships very well, you are taking precautions. Uh, if all these are in place, they are allowing cargo ships. So there is a big difference between the cargo ships and passenger ships. And passenger ships still, uh, they are not operating as usual. And we don't know how long it will take to come to normal circumstance. This is the number of port calls. We can see, uh, so if you see, this is the comparison between 2019 and 2020. So first quarter 2020, you can see it was almost uh, close to 2019. Uh, as I told you before, the main effect started from the second quarter, for April. So the difference was not much, but if you see the second quarter in both the years, 2019, it is blue and uh, the red one is 2020. So there was a huge difference in number of port calls. So you can see how much uh, the vessels were affected. So they, they did not have employability, mostly. Then uh, this we have done as per, uh, per month, okay, for various types of ships. And it is uh, for the 20, uh, 2020, how we did as per 2019. So first four weeks of 2020 is seen actually some increase over 2019. And then week five to eight as we, uh, gone through the year, you can see uh, up to first six months. And around June time, it was the worst, is almost 21% down since 2019. So you can see how much trade was affected. Now we are at poll two. Okay, so please go to Slido and you can see there are four questions. Uh, nothing right or wrong, but we want to see what the majority says or majority thinks. So it is very important uh, for us to understand, means all of us. So why shipping is so essential, okay? So we need to hear from you. Please cast your vote um, through Slido. And at this point of time, you will not be able to do any further progress on poll one. So poll one will be closed and poll two will remain open until poll three. Okay, we'll proceed uh, because we don't have much time. So in, in shipping, uh, especially uh, with the seafarers, what we have found uh, the problems during pandemic. Okay, we have discussed many things, but we see that their well-being were not maintained because they were not able to see doctors because of the risk. They were not allowed to show leave. So they were in a place for their whole contract if they were stuck on ship for 16, 18 months. So you can imagine they were stuck up in a box for 16, 18 months, and they are living in the same place where they are working it's really, really very bad situation. They did not get enough fresh air. They didn't see the people outside ship. So it's so terrible situation. And because of this pandemic, a uh, lot of ships, uh, they lost their employment. Uh, 
the charterer, they were reluctant to hire ships because of the situation. Uh, some ships already had charter, so they had various claims. And because of this, you know, uh, BIPCO supply time clause, 20, uh, clause 25, uh, that it says about the infectious or contagious diseases. That clause helped actually uh, to solve many problems between the uh, ship owners and the charterers. But provided that clause was incorporated or mentioned in their contract. If it was not mentioned, then sorry to say many owners uh, may have lost uh, uh, and gone through the offer. So this, this had a big impact on shipping. So I'm sure next time when owner will fix any charter or, or any charter party agreement, they will refer to the BINCO uh, supply time 2017 plus 25. And this is very, very important to mention because we don't know what is lying ahead. Then the cargo side, we had a lot of claims because of the delay, because you know the ships, even some crew chain or somebody had some symptoms, they could not, they didn't allow vessel to bark. They had to go to quarantine anchorage. There will be delay in cargo discharging. Then some cargo could damage. There are claims about demarrage. There can be some deviations. Some ports may be closed because local authorities, they don't allow. So some force measure options. There are various interruptions we have seen throughout this uh, time and still happening, still happening because still uh, we are finding the ways how to recover from that state. So still it is not clear. And on the mobility side, mobility of the people, we have seen the travel restrictions starting from the closure of airlines, uh, only restriction uh, through uh, transit. Some airlines already closed, some are operating very reduced number of flights. Even the flights are available. Some uh, areas you cannot uh, operate more than so many flights or so many passengers can come in a day or in a week, like in Australia they had. In various ports, various cities, they have a different, different restrictions. So it uh, affected the business. And then on top of that, once uh, people arrive, they had to go through quarantine and they had to go through health screening, checkups, a lot of things. And a perfectly a healthy man can be contracted COVID during this uh, mobility, whether by air travel or surface transport, you know, or whatever ways they can catch COVID, there is a high possibility. And that happened in many cases. And that also affected our business, and our shipping business. Then we, we also seen there are many shipbuilding contracts canceled, uh, many delivery declined or delayed. And at the same time, scrapping of ships also delayed. So it started from shipbuilding to ship scrapping. Everything was affected. And then training. So even though there are certain course, courses available, which are refresher courses, we have to do after certain times. Those trainings were not available. Uh, some trainings you cannot do online. You have to do on the equipment, you have to do on the system. So those trainings got affected and we got exemption, but it is just to check the performance and other things. So same thing for the airline pilots also, they had to do a lot of simulation training and other fitness training. And those were also affected at the same time. And then ultimately what happened, the drop in charter rates because the, there were less demand, okay? There are availability of ships. So charter, they have more choices. So ultimately the charter rates drop. And same thing happened for the services. And this is showing the port calls by ship type in 2020. So if you can see, you know, especially the weight bulk, which is basically tanker and gas ship, they were 
in the positive side uh, in uh, in the quarter one, but later on, actually, if you see the quarter two, all went into negative. So basically, the quarter two when it started to hit the shipping. So this we have seen some short terms and some long term uh, changes. Uh, we have seen short term maritime trade has decreased, uh, vulnerability in the ports and delayed customs and port clearance because all uh, people have to do this and it is all about people. So of course it got delayed, uh, ship waiting time gone up, but slowly we are recovering, but still a long way to go. A long term, we have moved more into digitalization and we are talking more about risk management. It has shown us a clear way that risk management is the key to surviving the business. And then merger acquisitions all are going on, still going on. It will go on in future. We don't know what lying ahead. And the supply chain reconfiguration and design. So that is also important. Probably we'll have less human interaction and more uh, machine or robotics working in supply chain across the supply chain. So this is uh, VLCC utilizations and earnings. You can see this is the quarter two where we expected uh, the maximum, but uh, uh, 2020 expected become less than 100%, 99%, and it, even it is going down further for the next two years. And in the port sector, again, we see the, some short-term changes and long-term changes. So because of people, a lot of people couldn't come. We had to segregate people. Uh, we have to keep minimum workforce. Uh, we have to keep isolation. So we have taken many methods, even in the office. So that's why the workload increased because less people same work or even more work. So ultimately workload increased. The port volume, uh, other means uh, volatility has increased and container was greatly affected, uh, especially for commodities and all. And the port economy slowed down. Okay. And same for the port calls and port connectivities. But probably uh, this will slowly will recover. But long-term changes are uh, which will be more important, like we are moving towards the technology more and more and increasing resilience and robustness of operation. And that is really, really important. And COVID has shown us uh, these things and we should think about this. And supply chain will be reconfigured as well due to COVID uh, impact. And container sector also you can see is also down in the last year. So overall, what we have seen that we have a legal impact on, on our businesses because we never thought and probably is in last hundred years, we never had this kind of uh, pandemic or impact on our life, on in our society, on uh, on our jobs, you know. So uh, there are a lot of disputes arise and we are now addressing future risk, what can happen in future. So risk-based approach. And we are trying to recover, how to recover. So these are the legal impacts. Then we are seeking for remote assistance, how we can do work from home, which uh, in the ship management sector uh, or the shipping commercial, it is very difficult, but you know, now people are used to. So we don't know what we'll do in future. Probably there will be practice also from work from home. Then business travels will be reduced, definitely, uh, because we have proved that without much traveling also we can manage. Uh, sadly, that is the case. And commercial losses, of course, we had. And then maritime connectivity, Okay, so we had to think about the supply chain and the logistics, uh, we can manage those. 
and but there will be overall impact on digitalization and smart ports these kind of things blank sailings also uh, you can see you know but blank sailings probably you know because it, it's in container trade liner trade as because they have to keep the timing so sometimes if they are delayed in somewhere they skip some port and that is called blank sailings and that also affected uh, not because of the uh, only the timing also some other issues so the liner trade also affected so at this moment we can see the cargo ports are running fine uh, but cruise ports are closed we are saying that quarantine for the crew is increased from 14 to 21 days uh, we are taking additional measures for the seafarers on board, providing PPE kit, instant testing kits, and uh, uh, giving them remote medical assistance. It's not just because of accidents in normal circumstances, because they cannot go to doctor. So there are a lot of additional safety measures uh, we have taken. And so, and these are also happening, uh, the cargo coming directly from uh, the manufacturer to the terminal. So avoiding the uh, 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 entry into the terminal. So less interactions, okay? And also we are, if there is any case, we are uh, going for, uh, going through the contract casings and uh, even the airlines, they are doing this and it's quite effective all the time uh, we are seeing this. And so what is the answer? I don't know, but maybe the vaccination, yes, uh, that we all are thinking, but we have doubt. So next poll three. So poll at this time, poll two will be closed and poll three is open now. So what will be the immediate change we can see in the shipping? So there are four questions. And uh, please select one. Thank you. Moving on. These are the post-COVID challenges uh, we all will face uh, who are in the shipping and maybe other people in other sectors as well. Okay, so we can see some renaissance due to protectionist ideas. Uh, we want to do everything in our country, then it's uh, more reliable, more things, but you know, that is not possible. And we'll see the number of pirate attacks, people losing jobs and all other things. So they will see the easy way to earn money. We'll see definitely, especially in the developing countries, uh, these things will happen. Okay, we'll see unavailability of qualified people to serve on board and Climate policy is another thing we will see after COVID. That will be a great challenge. Uh, we'll see the operational cost will go up and there will be losses as well. And less investment probably uh, because of uncertainties and all. Uh, the owners and others, they may uh, diversify their businesses into other business. And we can see the increase in price due to this and high insurance costs. In longer term, we can see the supply chain. This is just I'm touching upon on the supply chain. It will be redefined. Supply chain is, the, is actually the planning. Uh, so shipping is part of that. So how an item will go from the manufacturer from A to B up to the uh, consumer. So shipping is one mode of transport. So we'll see there will be change in uh, supply chain uh, and the risk management. And also we'll see the food shortages because of stocking up. That will happen, you know, people are more scared. And in the logistics side also, we have seen already, and uh, I don't know how long it will continue. So everywhere in the raw materials from commodity side to the final goods, you know, the demand is less. So there are supply shops and same for the distribution. So ultimately what we can see, the market can see the demand shops. It's all coming from the consumers. So 
So there are a lot lack of raw materials because there is no demand uh, and lack of workforce. People are restricted at home. People uh, losing jobs or they are reluctant to go to work. So all these things we are experiencing. And so ultimately logistics also affecting, we can see even at local levels, you know, we can see the there is a risk in the food safety, there is a delay in collection and delivery, and also closing of many restaurants and more and more uh, online demands is happening. So that probably the future. Next, this is the last poll and uh, this is saying what we have learned from COVID situation, okay? Again, please uh, put your answers and nothing right or wrong, but we want to see what majority say. These are the key findings finally. So what I have talked until now, all are uh, written here, uh, this, but you know, most important thing is we'll tend towards risk-based culture, we'll risk-based approach will be definite for every kind of business and in our life as well. And we'll see downsizing, we'll see merger, closure, but ultimately we don't know where we are heading. Another recession, probably that yet to come, but yes, that may be the answer. So we need to be prepared. And finally, I would say not to blame to anyone or any particular uh, things. Uh, it is wise to work together to get out of the situation. And with that, I am finishing my presentation and back to the, the our host, uh, Leslie. Thank you, thank you, Bon. We got some questions about your presentation. Your, the topic of your presentation is about the impact of COVID-19 on the maritime industry. And one of the members is asking, why, why would there be a rise in pirate attack as mentioned in your presentation? Private? Yes, pirate attack. Pirate attacks. Yes, as I said, you know, uh, this is particularly important for the developing nations. Like uh, you can see the West Africa, you can see in Asia, like uh, the Philippines, and these are poor nations and uh, or, or Yemen. And even there, people will be losing jobs. And so they have to survive. They have to live their lives. So they will find that piracy is the, probably the best way they can get the lump sum easily. So the attacks will increase. That's the speculation. And the second question from a member in UK. The member is saying that in UK, vaccinations are rolling out quickly. As a UK national seafarer with a vaccination, shouldn't I be able to join and leave vessels as normal worldwide? Yes, it depends on the, each country, each uh, uh, local authorities. It's not that they got the vaccination. It depends at the destination. Say, suppose a UK seafarer got vaccine and he is uh, coming to join the vessel in Vietnam. Vietnam did not have uh, enough vaccine. They just started and they don't have even hard immunity. So it will take long time, long way to go. And until such time, uh, he has to go uh, through the quarantine and other measures, screening and all. So the vaccination is just one layer of protection, but it is not everything. With vaccination, uh, maybe that particular uh, person is uh, protected, but he can still be a carrier. So the risk is still there. So many authorities will not allow to go freely. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mm. Roy, Roy, you are the vice chair of the Hong Kong Joint Branch. Yes. And you lived in Hong Kong for quite a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. I would like to ask uh, your opinion about the situation of Hong Kong in the coming years. Yeah. 
in particular, the, the strength, the weaknesses, the threat, and opportunity of Hong Kong in the maritime industry. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Leslie. Yes, uh, Hong Kong, uh, as you know, is a very uh, comparatively small area and is one of the uh, biggest uh, maritime nations in terms of the maritime business, not in terms of seafarers. So a lot of maritime businesses here, more than 800 uh, uh, organizations and businesses are here in Hong Kong. So future is uh, quite bright and Hong Kong has very proactive government. As you know, they have already secured the uh, uh, vaccinations for all its people and they have taken quite uh, you know, drastic measures to control spreading uh, viruses. So we, the people, they have good faith uh, in local administrations and the way they are controlling the viruses, the way they are controlling the businesses and government also is quite strong government, very powerful and financially stable. So government has also given a lot of uh, uh, financial supports to the businesses. So that is what the businesses they need at this moment. So they will stay, they will try to uh, survive. And in the long run, I can see, you know, they, if it continues like this, uh, the business will be here, though at a, a, at a cost. So Hong Kong itself is very expensive uh, place, but uh, the beauty is, you know, in a small area, there are a uh, lot of shipping businesses, which helps, you know. So Hong Kong will continue to uh, uh, maintain its position as a maritime business hub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also have one question. As you know, a, in Hong Kong, the second round of pandemic uh, break out uh, due to the food change in Hong Kong, Hong Kong capital. So how about do you know now Hong Kong government, what a uh, policy or what they have done to improve this, uh, this situation? Yes, uh, thanks Simon. Uh, uh, this is good question. You know, uh, the government, they allowed crew change here, uh, same as Singapore. And it was a good initiative. And due to that, of course, uh, there will be risk and uh, the, some seafarers, they got infected and immediately the government took action. They stopped the crew changes, and, but that was a temporary measures. Now they are still allowing, but with more measures in place and also locally, the crew, uh, the seafarers and uh, the business people, shipping business people, they are on the priority list. So they can get vaccinated on priority basis. And we are trying to return to the uh, normality and government is still uh, allowing now two changes. And uh, that is a great thing, same as Singapore. So, so we'll have no issues here in Hong Kong as long as things are in place uh, and uh, uh, people are following the regulations and people in Hong Kong, they are quite responsible and law abiding people. So yeah, it will be much easier to do shipping businesses from here. So does that mean you also agree uh, the, the question from one of member? Because he asked if the crew already take the vision, then just mean they can go out feeding. Uh, this is depending on the uh, local authority, yeah, but uh, if, whatever they will uh, allow, maybe they may allow the crew change because that is essential, but going to going for shore leave is not essential, so they may restrict that, but they may allow the crew change, they may allow going to the doctors, okay, those kind of things are uh, fine or in case of any accidents or emergency, some ships, they want to call Hong Kong, even COVID cases on board, I think on humanitarian grounds, they will allow and they may allow 
uh, even the crew change and other things uh, with all precautions uh, in place. And, uh, thank you. Leslie, also, if you can read out the poll results for each poll. Okay, let's have a look. Mm. Okay, it's from the screen, yeah. From, from the result of the live poll. Question number one, why is COVID so critical? From our member, wow, we see 50% of the response is change the way we live and work. Any opinion, Ron? Uh, uh, not really. As I mentioned before, uh, all uh, answers are uh, correct or wrong, but we want to see uh, why. But in my opinion, I can say that probably uh, not the change of our life and still a lot of things we have to see. But at this moment, why it is so critical? Because we don't have a clear uh, way to recover. So we have uh, vaccination, but we don't know. Some are giving sometimes uh, bad results. And we don't know when we will have a, something in place to completely recover from this situation. So recovery is not yet clear. That's my opinion. But as I said, nothing is right or wrong. Next one, please. Yeah. The poll is on why shipping is so essential. Well, we got 58% response. The backbone of global trade and economy. Yes, I think uh, you are correct. And uh, we all will agree. Uh, there are other options. Like if, uh, I put that everybody is leaving our shipping and that is not reality. Though we can say, but it's not reality. But reality is what 88% said. And I agree with that. And that is also my opinion because uh, that's what shipping is. Thank you. Okay. The next question, what immediate change can be seen in shipping? 36% mm, of the response was saying more remote inspection, survey, and audit. So, yes, again, you are correct. And uh, here the key word is uh, immediate. So immediate uh, things we can already see, uh, it's already started, the remote inspection, audits, and all those things. So yes, that's correct. That's the immediate change we can see. The robotics uh, uh, and the use of drones and all these things. But yes, that's the immediate effect. Okay. Thank you. The next question is, the best lesson learned from COVID is our response, 58% saying self-care and caring for others are important. Yes, uh, this is again, uh, you know, is correct. Uh, but, you know, uh, I will, uh, depend on the myth that health is wealth, that uh, we always uh, say this proverb, you know, ultimately that is the uh, main thing. And why we see, why I am saying this, uh, because, uh, you know, of course we have to take care, but uh, also caring comes uh, when it happens, but we have to be more proactive and more proactive things is uh, that statement, health is wealth. So we have to look after our health. We have to keep ourselves fit. Uh, yes, a lot of you can argue that uh, even if we are healthy, pandemic still can happen. It will attack us. That's true. But who are in poor health, they will be attacked first. That's why we, we are seeing that you know the people, uh, aged people or who are over 60, they can catch it very easily. On the other hand, we, if we see uh, from uh, aged from newborn until uh, say uh, teenagers or age 16, uh, they are less affected with this. Uh, but at the same time, their immunization system also changes very frequently. So ultimately key thing is, in my opinion, is that the health is well, that's the uh, key, key sentence. And uh, that 
we have to believe in that. But uh, thank you for your uh, uh, opinion poll. Thank you. Roy, there's a, there one last question yeah. from local member, Mr. Law. After that question, may I invite you to wrap up your presentation and the live post result and other Q&A. Okay, the last question is, do we anticipate any permanent change in maritime industry causing by COVID-19 events permanent change? Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, it, uh, I already showed in my uh, presentations in the shipping sector, in the port sector, there are long-term changes. And long-term changes are usually permanent changes. So there are not just one, there are many. So there will be some permanent changes. So you can also refer back to the IMRS uh, TV show and you can go through the slides and you can see there are many permanent changes we'll offer. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any further summary? Any further summary? On uh, no, only I, I would suggest all of you just uh, help each other and uh, let's get out of this uh, situation as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Yeah. That's it for tonight. And uh, also closing remarks. So yeah. say to join our. Well, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, most of the participants are members of IMIST and in Hong Kong Joint Bank in the past year. Yeah, we are facing a critical moment because most of the activities have to have to postpone or stop. Yeah. But in this year we start to build up more activities, yeah, including this first webinar. Yes, and uh, also uh, uh, the participants who are uh, from various parts of the world. You are watching these uh, events and participating. Thank you very much for this. And uh, thank you for your question and uh, comments. And unfortunately, this is a webinar, mostly one way. But uh, I think this will give you an insight of uh, how the COVID has changed the shipping dynamics. Mm -hmm. uh, most of us, we, we, can, and, uh, we can experience Already we experience, we can anticipate a lot of things, but there are a huge spectrum in shipping. So we may not know a lot of things uh, outside our area, but uh, ultimately the shipping will be affected. And if ship uh, gets affected, if shipping gets affected, so the people of the world will get affected. Uh, that's for sure. And that's, we have seen, uh, and also still uh, this thing is not over, not any close to the solution yet. Uh, many uh, countries, they are getting a new wave uh, at this moment. Uh, uh, even uh, Europe also getting the new wave and we are struggling uh, with this. Uh, and what we need to have, you know, sympathy for others to help others and uh, to keep uh, people stay in the job, uh, to keep people safe. Uh, that is uh, more important at this time. We are seeing that people are uh, affected various ways. Uh, the kids, they cannot go to schools. You know, the whole, our, our life, our system uh, has been changed. So this is, uh, really is not only just pandemic situation, it has uh, changed the definition of our life. So uh, please uh, all together come forward and let's help each other. Thank you. Yeah. In Hong Kong, Japan, we will organize more webinar and activities in this year. Let's keep in touch. Thank you. Goodbye.